Venice, Singapore, Yemen. Keep them coming through. Kyrgyzstan. Great, and we'll just get started in about one minute time. Costa Rica, Austria. Really, really, really well represented. Um, in terms of translation, I think, um, yeah, Thais, if you could answer that question in the chat about um, activating the translation. Great. Okay, keep them coming through. Keep coming. Keep telling us um, where you're coming from, um, what you're up to. Um, we really want to hear from you. So hello, everyone. I'm Lawrence. I'm director at uh, Rethinking Economics. Um, and I am really excited to be here um, with the organizations uh, represented uh, to talk on this really key question. Are we on the cusp of moving beyond GDP? Now, at Rethinking Economics, we're an international network of students around the world. We have about 120 groups uh, uh, representing about 35, 40 countries calling for a new economics education. Economics needs to change. I imagine that's why many of you have tuned in today to this webinar. It's what motivates many of the organizations uh, represented here. And for us, we see that really clearly in the discipline and the teaching and how that's then translated uh, by our politicians. GDP um, is one of the yeah uh, biggest challenges that we faced in the sort of 10 years that we've been organizing as a movement to make economics more critical, real world um, and democratic. And the, 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 the focus on growth above everything else um, now there's, there's sort of lots of discussions we could have on growth, but there is a there is a real focus on GDP as a measurement above above any other one. And for us, you know, if we want to shift the paradigm, if we want to have a different conversation and change economics, you know, in economy, in society, in the classroom, um, then we we really need to start uh, rethinking uh, GDP. So I'm really excited here to be with um, three panelists uh, today to talk about this discussion. Uh, we've been working with um, SDG Lab, uh, International Institute for Sustainable Development, and the United Nations Conference of Trade and Development. Um, we're going to be spending uh, the next 55 minutes uh, talking about, you know, what's what's wrong with GDP, why we should possibly move beyond it. Um, what that looks like uh, in terms of what the, the UN are doing um, and some added context um, from some of the panelists. And at the end, we're going to launch a competition. And uh, this competition is going to be related to an upcoming event that we're going to do in Geneva on April 17th. And it would also be great to see uh, many of you there. Um, before we jump into our first uh, panelist, uh, we have got a poll for you. So we want to find out um, from you all, uh, yeah, what you know, what what does GDP mean to you? Is it something that you are familiar with? Are you familiar with the shortcomings of GDP? And I think the options are not at all somewhat familiar. I'm an expert. I know everything there is to know about GDP. Um, or GDP is perfect, um, what are you all on about? Uh, so that should come up on your screen now. So do choose one of these options. It would be great to just find out, yeah, wh where are you coming from? Like, we, we want this to be an educational event. Um, so, we, so, so it'd be great to get a sense of uh, where people are in the room. So how familiar are you with the shortcomings of GDP? I'll give that maybe like 30 seconds to a minute. So yeah, if you're just coming into this and you've never heard of GDP, then great. That's ex you're exactly the type of people we want to be speaking to. If you're a policymaker or somebody working um, in economics change work, um, but yeah, you're not exactly sure where you sit with this or you're really interested in finding out more, 
um, then yeah, uh, this poll is for you. <laughs> Okay, great. Should we end the poll now and see what the results are? Great. So the results should be on the screen. So 70% of you said somewhat familiar um, with GDP. So I guess we all want to find out a bit more. There's quite a few experts in the room. and It'll be great to hear uh, some contributions from you when we get to the Q&A. Um, and anything that, you, that you're working on. Um, yeah, and then there's a small percentage of you that are not very familiar with this at all. And at least one of you thinks GDP is perfect. Um, so yeah, also be great to hear from you too. Okay, great. So our first panelist um, is uh, Anu Paltola, who's the Acting Director of Statistics at the UN Conference of Trade and Development. Um, and Anu is going to talk to us a bit about uh, what what the UN is up to regarding this subject and just give us a bit of a crash course. Thank you very much for the um, introduction and for the welcoming words. Um, it's my pleasure to join you today to discuss this interesting topics and especially to launch the process where we will hear from you. So I'll give you a quick recap of the UN initiative on Beyond GDP and the related political discussions in the UN and with all the UN member states. And this process also should go beyond member states to other stakeholders. In June 2023, last year, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres released a policy brief on going beyond GDP to value what counts. It's based on a UN-wide report that pulls together data, research and expertise to support member states in these discussions, all the stakeholders. This work involved the UN system, including the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, and is inspired by previous research and initiatives that many countries and organizations have carried out internationally. I call it this process representing the UN Trade and Development Author, jointly with the Chief Statistician Stefan Schweinfest from the United Nations Statistics Division in New York, and Chief Economist George Gray from the United Nations Development Programme. So it was a really joint effort. Um, first, this is not a new discussion, as you can see here. The same themes were discussed, for instance, almost 15 years ago in the Stiglitz Senfitusi report on measurement of economic performance and social progress. And over 35 years ago, um, in the Brundtland report on our common future, which introduced the concept of well-being now, in the future, and for everyone, which basically means well-being, sustainability, and equality. So this thinking is highly valid today. The initiative was called by the UN Secretary General as he has great concerns about the crisis we are seeing. There's an increasing disconnect between economic growth and well-being. We see that the Human Development Index has dropped for two years in a row, after 30 years of continuous progress. Economic growth is also placing heavy stress on the environment. And due to climate change, we might be missing a rapidly closing window to secure a livable future. This is what the scientists are saying to warn us. The need to move beyond GDP is not new, but perhaps it resonates now much more than before. This work, also stems from the 2030 agenda. If we go to the next slide, um, you will see where it comes from. The very last target of the 2030 agenda, 1719, asks us to develop measures of progress on sustainable development that complement GDP and support statistical capacity building. Also the UN, our common agenda report calls to urgently find measures of progress that complement GDP. This is kind of a program for the United Nations. It may be interesting to know how the UN Secretary General approached GDP and the need for additional indicators when he launched the policy brief. He said that GDP is the most widely used metric for a country's economic progress, but it has become a proxy of wealth creation and development progress. It will continue to be an important metric, but he also noted that 
human progress depends on many factors from levels of poverty and hunger to inequality and social cohesion and vulnerability to climate breakdown and other shocks. So if we look back to when GDP emerged, the world looked different. There were 2.3 billion people compared to 8 billion today. And GDP really helped to reconstruct the economy and gave national economies an identity that can be measured. But we now struggle with many different challenges and our values have changed. So we would need to similarly, we would need to find similarly strong other metrics on those aspects. There's a lot of data out there. So I think we have the basis to do so. Next, please. The UN-wide report proposes a framework to value what counts with six elements. These are all premised on human rights and aim to strengthen the focus on well-being, equality, and respect for life and the planet. The framework underlines building resilience to address vulnerabilities, participatory governance, and innovative and ethical economies that should help us solve the challenges we are facing today. This is the initial thinking of the broad themes that should guide policy decisions so that they will be more balanced. There's also a proposal to develop a value dashboard of 10 to 20 key indicators that meet a set quality criteria, indicators that are clear and appealing like GDP but more inclusive of environmental and social aspects of development. The future metrics should build on what exists, statistical frameworks and capacities. If we go to the next slide, um, in particularly, we're building on SDG indicators. Therefore, in the process, we carried out this mapping to see the connections of the SDGs and the themes that have been highlighted for the Beyond GDP initiative. The darker the color, the more we see connections. The SDG indicator framework has really brought about great progress in the availability of social and environmental statistics. It's created new collaboration at national, regional, and international levels among many stakeholders to really pull together to achieve sustainable developments. But there are many indicators, we, we can't really call them headline indicators at the moment. Next slide, please. So while the idea is to end up with a small set of key indicators of beyond GDP, the framework and related policies could be informed by the entire data universe. And there'll be a need to ensure that there are solid statistical foundations in countries with detailed data and possibility for this aggregation and to analyze that nobody is left behind um, when we progress. We'll soon hear from Peter um, on the ongoing update of the system of national accounts, which could also inform this initiative. The other interesting system for, for this work from the measurement perspective is the system of environmental economic accounts. As it hosts many environmental indicators which could be similarly powerful as GDP in the future. We would also need to look at population censuses and social surveys. There are many indicator initiatives globally. This already brings a great opportunity to take stock of what's out there and consider how these different initiatives could converge together to form a common language and practice in the future. Next phase. The indicator set needs to meet high quality criteria and convey really um, intuitive and actionable messages. One of the many reasons behind the success of GDP is that it's country owned. The UN has carried out a major capacity building initiative which, with a number of um, partners to support all countries to be able to measure their economy with GDP and the related accounts. This too is a universal agenda. All countries must be able to compile the indicators. The indicator set also needs to evolve gradually when new metrics become available, while we have to start from what we currently have. New issues might also emerge, so we have to have a flexible system. And then on the next slide, I have um, 
recommendations from the UN Secretary General's policy brief. He calls for a renewed political commitment to move beyond GDP and value what counts. Last year in September, he convened an SDG summit to discuss these themes and um, member states there confirmed their political commitment to explore measures of progress that complement or go beyond GDP. And they called for a United Nations led intergovernmental discussion. This process we expect to continue until the summit of the future for discussions there and then further on uh, for the development of the indicator set. He called for launching a scientific process that will result in the United Nations value dashboard with a limited number of key indicators that go beyond GDP. Potentially, he will set up a high-level expert group to ensure consultation and provide a sounding board for uh, statisticians and other scientists that would be developing such an indicator framework. Finally, the Secretary General also underlined that this needs a major capacity building and resourcing um, for member states so that all countries can measure progress beyond GDP. And then also to pursue fairer and more inclusive and sustainable future. Then on my last slide, um, linking this back to the current discussions, we expect to see many consultations this spring, including this one, where we would like to seek feedback from everyone on what are the values this kind of framework should be built on. The possibilities for well-being in the future and sustainability aspects really underline the perspective of future generations and therefore your views on what matters now and in the future and what should underline decision making are crucial. This process is likely to go forward with the development of an indicator set. But this is much more than a measurement issue, much more this is about making decisions that are balanced, that consider their consequences to people and the planet. And, and that's in the core of, of the whole initiative. Data is in high demand. The role of reliable data is critical to any global development commitments so that we can bring transparency and see if the commitments are met. Ahead of Davos, it was interesting that false information was identified as the number one threat globally. And that puts really an emphasis on having reliable information. Now we were tested in the statistical systems, how we can compile statistics during the pandemic when it was no longer possible to count the population by visiting households. For instance, you had to find new innovative methodologies and many things have changed since then in a, with, in a great speed. But now we must also be geared up for new priorities to uh, measure aspects of more subjective nature of well-being and, and equality. There is a lot of work already being done on which we can build. As a final point, GDP was developed at the time when it was underpinned by heavy economic theory making. So now we need new theories and insights from you, from students and researchers, for a new equally strong set of metrics, accounting frameworks to inform future policies. Thank you. Thank you, Anu. Um, uh, a great presentation and uh, a, a really good point uh, to end on, like new theories and new ideas to underpin um, uh, the, the future frameworks. I'm now going to hand over uh, straight to Peter van der Ven, um, who is the update lead ed editor at System of National Accounts that Annie referred to. Um, take it away. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Laurels. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, I was just kicked out of the meeting. Hopefully it doesn't happen again, but uh, uh, anyhow, let's go, let's move forward. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm I'm the representative of the dark side. Uh, 
I'm I'm national accountant for close to 40 years now. I'm well, obviously uh, heavily involved in the compilation of GDP. And by way of introduction, it's clear there's a lot of criticism on GDP in providing guidance for policy. It does not appropriately uh, measure well-being, including this distribution or progress of society more generally, and it does not uh, uh, address any environmental issues or ecological boundaries. So, but from the start, and as is recognized in the system of national accounts, GDP is not to be put on a par with measurement of well-being or even sustainability, uh, sustainable well-being. Often it is interpreted in that way, but GDP really is a measure of economic activity or income generated through economic uh, activity. That's that's its uh, main goal. Uh, so, but how to address these issues? in the context of the upcoming update of the 2008 SNA. That's mainly what I'm looking at uh, in, in this short uh, presentation. Uh, how can we address it? Perhaps by way of introduction, I should also say GDP is the headline indicator which comes from the system of national accounts. And the first system of national accounts was developed in 1953, uh, heavily in the... Uh, Various uh, famous economists were heavily involved in this first version, uh, and later Nobel Prize winners like Richard Stone, uh, uh, like Stone and uh, well, now for Kuznets, they were involved. And we had various updates of this system of national accounts. It became, I should say, thicker and thicker, more and more pages. And the latest version is the 2008 system of national accounts. And we are currently in the process of updating this 2008 system of national accounts to get into the 2025 uh, SNA. So I should say the SNA system of national accounts is much more than GDP. It is actually a, a comprehensive statistical framework uh, to arrive at com credible, comparable, and authoritative data on economic activity. And I emphasize again, economic activity. But I would also like to add that SNA can actually contribute to the wider objective of, of measuring well-being and sustainability. There is a wide range of other data and aggregate measures uh, within the system of national accounts. For example, if you want to know more about material well-being, uh, of households, you can look at household disposable income, final consumption, at household wealth. You can also look at government, the impact on distribution of income. So that's already included. And I would argue that perhaps GDP is the most frequently used indicator. It's not necess necessarily the best indicator if you want to look at aspects of material well-being. In addition, the SNA can be extended and adapted to organize data to capture uh, dimensions of well being and sustainability. And Anu already alluded to this system of environmental economic accounting, the SIA, which is basically a complementary system to the system of national accounts and, um, and provides an important, I say, additional. Uh, framework of organizing data to account for environmental sustainability. And uh, well, it's, I, I would say that, that, that you can say it's acknowledged uh, that a comprehensive assessment of well being and sustainability also requires additional measures. That's clear. And therefore, we have the Sustainable Development Goals or the Better Life Index. So, of, uh, showing various components of well-being and using a suite of indicators. Looking at, when we move forward to the 2025 SNA, what changes do affect the measurement of uh, well-being and sustainability? I would say that within what we call the core framework of the system of national accounts, we now 
clearly recognized natural capital as a separate class of assets. Uh, we also want to recognize depletion as a cost of production, which would affect net measures, as we call it. So net domestic product, net national income, which are actually more appropriate measures than, than gross domestic product. Explicit recognition of renewable energy resources like wind, solar, etc. More attention to accounting for non-renewable energy, energy resources more explicit guidance on accounting for biological resources yielding once only products. We're talking about timber and fish, et cetera, and explicit guidance on accounting for produ production of electricity and heating by houses. But I should say, we, we are only looking at, at monetary uh, values. I think some slides have been switched for some reason. Well, anyhow, uh, take the next one. This one should come before the, 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 the previous one. As, uh, for some reason, it has been switched. But the focus of, of the SNA update is on digitalization, globalization, and better accounting for well being sustainability. So these are the most substantive changes. So take the next slide. Yeah. So please, for, uh, um, sorry for, for this switch of the, the, the uh, slides. If you look at beyond the core, sorry, yeah, beyond the core framework of national accounts, there's a much more explicit referencing to the SIA central framework and a very important addition, the SIA ecosystem accounting, which accounts for the contributions of ecosystem to environmental uh, sustainability. It's a very important component, but as I said, these are complementary frameworks to account for issues related to environmental sustainability. So you should, you should easily combine economic activities in the SNA with the environmental issues in the SIA frameworks. Next. If you further, if you look at, at uh, attention for, for well-being uh, kind of measures, there's much more at, within the core frameworks, much more attention for distributional issues by introducing standard breakdowns of households by income decile uh, uh, in line with the relevant aggregates in the system of national accounts. So uh, looking at income, consumption, and saving and wealth of households. There's also much more information on labor, which is an important component of, of well-being. But, but also for other issues, and it's closely aligned to <clears throat> the resolutions of the International Conference of Labor Statist uh, Statisticians. So next slide. Beyond, and I think this is a very important uh, component, beyond the core framework of national accounts, there's also a development of a suite of thematic and extended accounts to support analysis of well-being uh, and sustainability as promoted via dashboards of indicators like the SDGs. Uh, we will encourage the, uh, the compilation of accounts for unpaid household services, which are not included in the SNA, accounts for health and social conditions in line with the satellite health accounts, accounts for education and training in line with the relevant satellite accounts, and also experimental measures of human capital. So there's a lot of, you will, if you know that these, these uh, SDG, SDGs or other dashboards of indicators of well-being, you will see a lot of connections with these aspects which are accounted for in these dashboard, uh, in the, uh, dashboards of indicators for well-being. So next slide. <clears throat> but this, what we're trying to do is a very pragmatic approach using areas which have gained prominence in the, in the past and also have prominence, uh, gained prominence by way of practical uh, experience. What we're trying to do is, is to provide an angle between policy and research and certain aspects of well-being by 
providing data on the production and financing of services which contribute to the outcomes of certain aspects of well-being, but also allowing for the analysis of interrelationships, the trade-offs and win-wins between various aspects of well-being. It, you, you can improve one indicator of well-being or, or have policy for improving one indicator, but they have negative impacts on other indicators. So we need to balance our policy and research to arrive at, at a more comprehensive uh, progress, uh, I would say. Yeah. And there's potential to, to, to introduce further extensions in the future based on user demands and practical experience. More concretely, and that's the final thing I would like to say, there will be three new chapters on the contribution that the SNA can make to the measurement of well-being and sustainability. And I would like to add to emphasize that the SNA is not actually measuring well-being, but it can play a role in the measurement of well-being and sustainability. And we will have to further explain that. We have a chapter at the right at the front of the new SNA which is talking about national accounts and measures of well-being and environmental sustainability, the role national accounts can play in this. There's a, a separate chapter on measuring well-being, 34, and a chapter on measuring sustainability of well-being or, say, environmental. It's mainly focusing on environmental sustainability and making references to the SIA, as I mentioned. So there's a lot of more... I would say a uh, detail about the connection between the SNA and measures of well-being and sustainability. I thank you very much for your attention. I'm sorry for the slip up with the slides. Thank you, Peter, uh, for giving that really needed uh, context. And um, sorry for uh, slipping you up on the slides. Uh, we just wanted to keep you on your feet. Um, <laughs> so um, we're gonna go some questions. Um, so uh, I'm going to go to the Q&A. So if you have any questions or thoughts uh, that you wanted to share, um, feel free to sh uh, share contributions in the Q&A and, and, and we will get to them. And if you see any in there, um, uh, we can upvote them. We only have about 10, 15 minutes for this bit. Uh, so we will try and move through it quickly. First question um, we got was from Katie Weiss. Um, and this one is to Anu. Uh, so Anu, you mentioned that you would consult ahead of the Summit of the Future. Um, could you tell a bit more about how we can engage as a uh, CSO? And if you can remember better than I can exactly the what CSO means, <laughs> then <laughs> please do say that in your answer. Thank you. Um, I wish there was a, a plan laid out regarding consultations ahead of the summit of the future, but there are many discussions. Mainly, the best thing would be to reach out to your representatives in the United Nations in New York, who will be representing your, your country in the summit of the future. But in addition, I would just encourage you to follow up on any um, events related to Beyond GDP or valuing what counts and contribute to, to those by joining them and providing your views. And um, maybe you can also follow up on the Our Common Agenda page where the Secretary General has his policy briefs and see if there's a, an opportunity there. One way to influence would be to take part in this essay competition. I would also like to say that when in, and if the, the effort to develop an indicator dashboard or uh, a small indicator set is launched and if that will be under the UN Statistical Commission, anything that is endorsed by the UN Statistical Commission always goes through global consultation where all countries with their national statistical offices, I'm not sure if CSO here refers to central statistics office or it could be something else, um, but all of the statistical offices and their heads are informed of any new statistical standards, indicator sets, and so on uh, for endorsement by the UN Statistical Commission. If the work is launched this year, um, it will take a year or two to have an indicator set ready. 
hope that answers. Thank you. Uh, Trine, did you want to come in? Yes, and I'm sorry to jump in the middle here without having introduced myself properly. I promise I'll do that in a minute. But I wanted to just make a comment about uh, the opportunity for civil society uh, engagement. So uh, there is a coalition called uh, the UN We Need, and I know that they're organizing a series of civil society briefings and consultations ahead of the uh, Summit of the Future. Um, I would also encourage follow to, following the UN Futures Lab. I believe they're doing some work around consultations also with civil society ahead of the Summit of the Future. And I think, but don't hang me on this, I think that there is meant to be a civil society uh, conference in Nairobi uh, taking place in May. I think this is still to be confirmed, but I would just encourage that you you check the Summit of the Future website regularly because that will have updates around these events. And then, of course, last but not least, specifically on the Beyond GDP track, uh, if you can, I encourage you to check out uh, our event that we'll have on the 17th of April here in Geneva, which will be a good opportunity to engage specifically on this topic ahead of the Summit of the Future. And I'll introduce myself later, but just want to jump in on that. Thank you, Trini. Um... And uh, that was uh, Chini Schmidt uh, from the International Institute of Sustainable Development, who will be speaking with us in a few minutes. Uh, so for the next question um, from uh, Pam Pence. Um, so we are in an ecologically overshoot. Uh, we use up uh, resources each year by July. How do we address uh, shrinking our economy, waste and, pop and population to get us back into balance with Earth's capacity to support us? Um, I don't know. Um, if either Peter or Anu, you would like to take that one. Maybe Peter is more in the dark side of the accounts and how this can be taken into account in the accounts. But another issue is how do we take it into account in real life, which uh, decisions may not be the right people to answer. But Peter, do you want to go? Yeah, it's, it's a very big question. And I think a very critical question for the future. And obviously, this is a lot about, uh, well, I would say, how how can we give more prominence to the ecological boundaries? And it starts with appropriately measuring the these uh, ecological boundaries. And that's why I'm such a big supporter of uh, development of uh, eco the system of environmental economic accounts, <clears throat> which is very important, especially the element about ecosystem uh, ecosystem accounting, which accounts for for looking at ecosystems uh, and and the services they provide to the society and the importance of this, and where we uh, have critical values. And there's a lot of very excellent material about uh, and on how to measure this, especially in the CIA ecosystem accounting, and definitely recommend people to have a look at what is written down there. It's 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 great stuff. Uh, but yeah, but the, the the other part is it, it is basically uh, I would say a policy question that we need to address and very important one. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you, Peter. Um, we we'll go to another question um, that's been upvoted quite a lot. Uh, so this is from an anonymous. Uh, so if seeking elements to complement uh, GDP rather than challenging GDP, there is a concern that the perverse aspects of GDP growing as a consequence of environmental destruction, for example, is implicitly endorsed. Does this serve to undermine the efforts being put forward to move beyond? GDP. Possibly, um, uh, new. this one might be for you. Um, I can start and see if Peter wants to add something. I think um, from my side that GDP is really based on, based on really robust theory and accounting system that has been developed over the years to measure economic activity. But the problem is in how it's used and this has to be questioned. GDP should not be the measure of success of a nation anymore. Maybe it was the measure of success of the nation when we had a small, smaller population in the world and um, when economic rebuilding was really the focus 
Now we have other issues that need to be need to receive the same level of attention. So really, this is the also the the work that should be undertaken by the UN to help member states review the uses of GDP and come up with guidance on what it, what are the correct uses of different indicators and develop these equally strong indicators of other aspects and encourage decision making that considers information in a more balanced way so that we are not um, guided by one single measure. So that, that's what I would say. But what we really need is a robust theory basis similar to the system of environmental economic accounting, which has been developing over recent years for um, to guide us in the measurement of even more tricky issues, economic activity is one thing, and it's already a very complicated um, measurement task. If we go to measuring environment and how do we how do we value the services and assets that environment provides us with, um, it goes beyond economic values. How do we value well-being and health um, as, when we look at humans and what we need? So that's a really fundamental setup. We have to get all the researchers and students out there to think about what we need to do, how can we have measures that are more balanced? Well, to, to add to that, and I, I think it's an excellent answer that has been provided by Anu, but I, I want just to give the example at the micro level. Uh, we're talking about macro data uh, continuously, but take it to the micro level, to a person. Looking at GDP, is similar to looking at income and that income is is the perfect measure for progress of, of, of the well-being of a, of, a, of a person and it doesn't there are other matters with that uh, matter when it comes to well-being of a person that, that health or education or job or work there are a lot of things that matter for, for well-being of an individual. You would not only focus at income also, uh, on, on, only on income. You would take a broader perspective. And I think if the, you take that at macro level, G, looking at GDP as, as, as an only indicator of success is looking at income as the only, uh, the only thing that matters. And you need to take a broader perspective, I think. But it's it's not it was not not easy to get away from our addiction to economic growth. Thank Brilliant, you. great answers um, to those questions. Thank you. Um, so I think we've probably got time for one more question. Um, um, if with a brief answer, it sounds and it sounds like one that might have come from a, a student or uh, somebody uh, within the the econ economics and academic world. So. Environmental economics was mentioned as informing this work to move beyond GDP. Um, is ecological, ecological economics being considered? And shouldn't ecological economics be given greater consideration given the significant concerns around the viability of growth still endorsed uh, within environmental economics? Anybody like to take that question? Not sure I fully understand the question. Uh, they, well, for for me, looking at ecological considerations is is something that you do in in the in the framework of environmental economic accounting, especially ecosystems accounting. Uh, you, you do look at at all these ecological uh, considerations. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. If you want, you want yeah, if you want, I can add something. Um, of course, the ecosystem accounting gets close to those thoughts. Um, not sure I understand exactly also the, the question, but um, I also wanted to mention that often um, the concepts and the language that has been developed for, for looking at the economy is being borrowed to other areas. And maybe we need to go beyond using concepts and measures that have been developed for measuring the economy 
in the measurement of environment. For instance, life has a value of its own. Um, it doesn't have to ha have a value only through its economic um, usefulness. So that's something that can be also thought about. How do we measure things uh, within using their norms and their concepts that are most relevant to the issues that we are measuring? Thanks for that. So I think um, that's, I mean, that sounds to me um, like a description of what ecological economics um, is getting at. The um, the difference in the um, uh, economics world between environmental economics is one which environmental economics uses very much the micro foundations and uh, does put uh, financial value um, uh, to uh, uh, to things and how we measure them and ecological is economics is much more about the biophysical limits and 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 trying to move away from that way of valuing things so that's perhaps I, perhaps i may add to that Lawrence. Mm -hmm. there's a lot of focus in ecosystem accounting on physical indicators the physical dimensions and mm -hmm. not necessarily the monetary dimension that's only part of it so mm -hmm. great um so i think we've um we're gonna just uh move on from this section um but we will um capture all the questions and we will we will look at um uh contacting you all with some of these answers so i think they might be quite useful uh for this conversation to keep going um so the final uh contributor uh is uh trini schmidt um who briefly said hello before <laughs> um who is um uh, part of um uh, SDG Lab, a strategic advisor and the International Institute for Sustainable Development, um, uh, based at UN Geneva. Uh, and uh, Trini is going to talk to us about the essay competition. Thank you so much, Lawrence. And uh, thank you, Anu and Peter. I think this was such a great introduction to the topic that we're discussing today. So yes, my name is Trina Smith, and I'm a strategic advisor with the SDG Lab. And it's a great pleasure to be with you today and be collaborating with our great partners on this essay competition that we can't wait uh, to launch. So uh, just a few words about the SDG Lab before I dive into the competition. So the SDG Lab is an innovation space here at UN Geneva, where I'm sitting today. And it works really to promote long-term sustainability and adding new lenses to sustainable development. One of the unique things about the SDG Lab is that we work in partnerships. And so IISD, the International Institute for Sustainable Development, is a key partner of the lab and makes this link to civil society organizations as well. And ISD also has a long tradition of working on what we call comprehensive wealth. So also looking at how we can go beyond GDP. And I can share a link about that if you want to know more about that work, or otherwise you can Google uh, ISD comprehensive wealth. So uh, at the SDG Lab, we really approach sustainable development through a systemic lens. And this is why uh, the topic around rethinking economics and moving beyond GDP is absolutely key because it's very clear to us as we've heard both from Anu and Peter that there's no way of ensuring a sustainable future if we don't look at how our current systems, uh, the shortcomings of our current systems and how we change these so that they meet the needs of current and future generations in a planet where we can all thrive. Um, this is why uh, we want to talk about redesigning systems around values. And New spoke a little bit earlier about the fact that values have changed and values will continue to change. Currently, we have values that are enshrined globally in the sustainable development goals, notably to leave no one behind. And when we talk about leaving no one behind, we talk about current generations, but we also talk about future generations. We talk about the options that we're leaving for future generations to thrive in their lives. So when we talk about future generations, we talk about those not yet born. Um, we had last year, we had a great event here uh, at the UN around rethinking economics for long term sustainability and building on that, we really want to hear from you. So we want to hear what you value uh, in a framework that moves beyond GDP. So building one on what Anu presented from the Secretary General's policy brief and his recommendations and hearing from Peter around the work that they're uh, doing to upgrade the uh, national st statistical accounting systems. Uh, we really want to turn those conversations around values. Um, so today we're launching an essay competition 
um, to hear from you, what values and principles would you like to see in a framework to value what counts beyond GDP and what are the challenges to be addressed as a priority? Now, this competition is really uh, for anyone uh, under 30. So I know that this might be challenging to some of you sitting out there feeling young at heart, but we want to give the option to young people and young experts to express their uh, views, their concerns, uh, because really, this will be inherited by generations to come, and it's important that young people have a say in the systems that we design uh, for the future. So uh, we'll be sharing the link with all of the guidelines uh, so you can have a closer look at this. But the gist of it is, it's a short essay, so maximum uh, a thousand words. The deadline for submission is the 6th of March. Uh, when you submit, uh, you will indicate your age and where you're submitting from. And of course, we have prices. So the 10 best essays will be published in a joint publication by the SDG Lab, Rethinking Economics and UNCTAD. Uh, and the top five uh, winners will be invited to come to Geneva for the meeting on the 17th of April to share their thoughts uh, in a meeting with uh, young people, civil society organizations, grassroots uh, here in Geneva to discuss how we move beyond GDP ahead of the summit of the future where member states will be discussing this. Um, so we're super excited to read your essays. Uh, we can't wait. Uh, please send them in uh, before the 6th of March. Um, I think I've said all that I should, but uh, I think we still have time for a little bit uh, of questions. So if there's any questions around the guidelines, I think Lawrence can help me answer them as well. Uh, we'll drop the link in the chat and the link is also here on the uh, PowerPoint. Um, but yeah, Lawrence, anything on the guidelines that I should add before we open it up for questions? Um, no, just to say that um, there's yes, yeah, so there's, there's 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 ten essays that we want to um, uh, receive from you, and then five uh, of five of those we want you to join us um, in Geneva. So you will get to. Um, come and feed in your views into this process um, to move beyond GDP. And you also get to hang around with myself and Trini and maybe lots of other great people. Um, so yeah, so if there are any questions on this process, I will look at the um, the most recent questions um, um, and see if there's any relevant. Um, otherwise, we could take one last question. Um, um, from, from I saw that there's a question about the 17th of April. Maybe I could take that one. Yeah. Um, so yes, on the as I mentioned last year in October, we had an event here in Geneva uh, around rethinking economic systems for long-term sustainability. This was really when we kicked off this conversation uh, together with UNCTAD around uh, involving civil society perspectives on this process. Um, so this is really a second meeting in the series, but here we want to really take a deep dive on young people's opinions uh, around what values as we develop this uh, framework to move beyond GDP. Uh, as Anu mentioned, the Summit of the Future is taking place in September, and this is why we want to have this meeting in Geneva in April, so we can really prepare and try to have young people influence this process uh, that will be discussed in September in New York. Uh, so on the 17th of April, um, in theory, it's, it's open to anyone who can make it to Geneva. So it'll be hosted here at Palais des Nations. Uh, we will be aiming for an in-person meeting because we want to have breakout groups and it facilitates better discussions. Um, so we, we can consider maybe live streaming it, but in terms of the discussions, it's definitely better to be in the room. We will send out more information about that uh, shortly. Um, and as Lawrence and also mentioned, the five uh, top winners of the essays will be invited to come and join this meeting in Geneva. Um, but we hope that anyone who can make it are, uh, are most welcome. Great, thank you, Trine. Um, so yeah, um, the we will um, send out more information on the event um, and, and rest assured, um, um, uh, I am over 30, so I won't be able to um, uh, submit an essay but i will be there and you are you are absolutely welcome to join us um great so we have a few minutes left i wonder if it would be uh good instead of taking some of the questions because we will send a follow-up email and if if and we will look at some of the highly rated questions um and see if we can answer them 
but maybe it'd be great to just hear some final words from Peter and Anu um, just before we close in a, in a few minutes. Um, Peter, do you want to go first? Yeah, not, nothing to add in particular. I'm, I'm looking very much forward to what, what uh, is being uh, sent in uh, the essays. Uh, I think it's it's important to to have this kind of well, I say essay competition to get also get a feeling of what is the thinking and uh, of, of the youngsters. I, I would say I'm I'm an old guy, so uh, but but I'm very interesting in hearing. The, and seeing the the contributions, so very much welcome this uh, this essay competition and can well perhaps the future Nobel Prize winner is amongst them. So thank you. Amazing, thank you, Peter. Anu, thank you very much, Peter. I I also think this is a very important initiative and one that can really rock the foundations of how we decide about things. And as a statistician, I'm eager to measure what matters. We have this pleasurable job of trying to measure um, everything that should be measured in, in reliable data. And I hope we can continue to do that in the future. Um, really measuring what matters depends on what you think matters. So I hope that you will put your hearts into the essays and we will get something really interesting to present to the UN Secretary General and um, something that will really attract them and make them stop and think, this is what we have to incorporate in the future framework to value what counts. So thanks so much for joining us today. Um, it was a pleasure to be involved. Amazing. Um, thank you. Thank you for the, those final words. And um, in the Final question that's come up. So, who will uh, judge this question? So, that judge this competition. So, that will be um, members of uh, Rethinking Economics and SDG Lab. So, myself and uh, Trini. Trini, did you want to say any more on that, or, or, or you can have the final word? Well, thank you so much, Lawrence. Then the final word will just be a big thanks to Rethinking Economics, to UNCTAD, to Peter uh, for joining us today. I think uh, at the SDG Lab, we really think that moving forward to achieve sustainable development, we need to rethink systems and economic systems is one of the most important ones to start looking at. As many have said during this conversation, this is nothing new, but maybe it's time. And so we're really excited to see your contributions and we can't wait to also see some of you here in Geneva in April. Thank you everyone. And uh, we'll uh, be reading your essays shortly. Brilliant. And uh, to the final question in the chat about uh, the flyer, we're going to send around a flyer to all the participants, uh, which you can uh, share. And we would really, really encourage you to share it widely. Thanks, everyone, for joining. It's been really, really great uh, to have you in this conversation. And I look forward um, to reading all of your essays. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.